Welcome to Modular 2. This video is about how the car works. We're going to talk a lot of stuff here about, um, you know, uh, pre-driving habits, the pre-driving task, uh, icons in the car, you know, uh, what is oil, um, everything. So uh, some of you kids may already know a lot of this stuff, may not. You know, it, 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 it may be review for you, and then some of you kids may know nothing about how the car works. So, basically, we'll have some videos in there. We're also going to talk a little bit about seat belts and uh, as we go from there. Now, Modular 2, pretty much Modular 2 through Modular 12 from here on out is pretty much going to be the video, the learn, and then take a quiz. And then you just go to the next chapter. Whatever you do, I know meanwhile you're probably ready to go get your permit, may already have your permit now. Don't forget to finish module 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Again, module 0 is for the parent. Module 13 is for the parent. That doesn't mean the kid doesn't look at it. Uh, but basically, it's, you know, module 13 is how to do the drive times, how to do the parking lot lesson, the neighborhood lesson, and so forth. Okay, so uh, uh, a lot of this stuff will always be review, but gradually as we get going, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so again, let's talk a little bit about uh, Modular uh, 2. Again, a little brief. I may have already showed you this before, but I kind of want to show you. So right here, you've, um, you've already done Modular 1 right here. Uh, if the certificate is yellow, still you need to you, you need to wait till the timer goes off. It'll gradually turn red. If it's red, it's because you didn't open this, 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 this. Okay, but you really should be going to module two if you haven't done all those. Um, so kind of be aware of that. Uh, when this turn this this one right here turns green, you will go down to the DPS. Uh, and get your certificate, which you should have already, it should already turn green by now, and you should be ready to go. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. Um, again, a little review. We're going to talk about pre driving task, occupant restraints, symbol and devices. We're going to talk a lot of stuff that's going to pop up your car. What does a check engine light? What does, if this little gas light pops up, does it mean you're out of gas or what? Okay. The starting task. Vehicle operation and controlling task, and then post drive time. Now, in the curriculum, the video is just a supplement to the learn. Okay? Uh, sometimes the learning part is going to have uh, extra stuff. A, a good example. In the learn, in uh, modular three or four, we're going to talk about a system called See It. I'm going to teach in the video a system called IPDE, the Smith system. Okay, so see the difference there? So I'm going to kind of give you extra stuff that you need. But the video is going to be very good because at the very end, I'm always going to show the questions to, to the stuff, sort of like a pre-test. Um, uh, pre you can look at them. Some of the kids take the questions and they take pictures of the questions and then they go in and just kind of read through or Google the questions and just go through and, and solve it from there. So however you choose to do it, some people do the learn and they go straight to the quiz. Some people do the, the video and they go straight to the quiz. Some people do the, the video and the learn and then they go to the quiz. It doesn't matter. It's totally up to you. So just be aware of that. And the quiz will always be right there at the end. Okay, so, and again, just a, uh, just a note that I want to read to you to make sure you know where you're at. This is a small note on what you should have done by now. You should have passed your permit test by now, and you can go to the DPS and get a permit. Or you might be waiting for the DPS to open up, so like it's a Saturday or Sunday or holiday, okay, uh, to open. You might be getting your documents ready, whatever. At some point in time, you need to go to the DPS and get your permit. Don't forget to do that. Uh, before uh, you go, your parents need to read Module Zero again to figure out what to take to DPS. Also, 
Before you go to the EPS, the certificate you print out, make sure it's correct. Look at it. Watch over it. Make sure the name's spelt right. And anything's wrong on there because computers do mess up. Give us an email and we'll fix the document. It takes us you know, a couple seconds to fix it. Okay. Remember, if you are still 14, you cannot get a permit until you're 15. Okay, so the certificate won't print out until you're 15. That's the reason why it probably has a timer on there still, and you're wondering why you passed it or whatever. Okay, these are more de uh, uh, links to the driver's license office, um, so forth. Hello, young lady. Can I help you? Sure, Sonny. I need a carburetor kit for a 440 Hemi. I'm thinking it'll take 55 millimeter jets. Been losing compression like crazy. Now I know, retool the crankshaft and try hotter plugs. Been there, done that. Oh, by the way, do you have any of those new titanium butterfly valves? Uh, could you repeat that? If you maintain your vehicle, you can help reduce air pollution and drive clean across Texas. How the car works, module two. So let's get deep in. So right here is the instrument panel, okay? And so let's talk about these. So what I want you to do is pause the video, okay? And let's take a look at these and see if you can guess these. Now, I'm not going to really pause. I'm just going to go over them, but it'd be kind of neat to see if you know where they are. It, first of all, you should know what nine is, okay? So let's go through here, all right? Uh, how many can you name? Number one, temperature indicator light. Two, RPMs left turn signal indicator, mileage indicator, number five is high beam indicator, six is miles indicator, number seven is right turn signal, eight is speedo, uh, speedometer, nine is fuel gauge, full fuel indicator, and then down there number 10 is low pressure, 11 battery warning light, temperature light, which means kind of low water, 13, bake brake warning light, 14, airbag activation, 15, seatbelt reminder, 16 is transmission indicator, 17, gear shift indicator, 18 is low pressure, water, okay, and then low oil indicator. All right, if you ever get low oil indicator, you better pull over right then and get some oil in there, okay? Uh, 20 is a check engine light. Now, 20 check engine light doesn't necessarily mean your car's breaking down. I've had the check engine light be fixed by just going out to the gas tank and turning the cap because you didn't put it all the way on. Okay, but what I would do on a check engine, uh, check engine light comes on, at least pull over, check your oil. Uh, if that's still good, you might be, uh, you know, look at your fluids in there. And if those are still good, then you might be all right. Okay. Uh, to get to the next gas station or whatever, someone can fix your uh, stuff. And then 21, anti-lock brake system. All righty. So again, this is the instrument panel, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about uh, uh, devices on the car and, and warning lights and uh, everything, okay? All right, so now, how many of these devices you can name? You should all be able to name what P is. You should all be able to name what K is, okay? So uh, uh, we'll get to those. So let's go through these. Uh, if you want to pause the video and give it a shot and look at them, we'll go from there. But if not, we're going to go through these. All right, so A is airbag on and off switch. B is airbag activation. C, anti-like brakes. D, theft. E is the little thing you stick your uh, plug in for a charge your phone. F is battery. G, brake warning light. Safety alert system. I is a knob. It's like air control, the little knob for AC. Door locks. K, oil pressure. Y'all should know it means it's low oil. Temperature light for L. M is seat belt, N is fog lamps, O is dry wheel selector, and what is P? Fuel indicator. I bet you'll never guess what Q is. Q is a fuse. It's the little 
metal thing that goes through the fuse and when that breaks uh, basically uh, it, 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 uh, the fuse is no good. R is tr uh, hazard lights and S is um, uh, the blinker. Okay, T we won't worry about, but T is daytime running lights. All right, U, uh, high beam, hood release, W is horn, X is fan speed, dimmer, Z, cigarette lighter, A, exterior light, B, on and off, C, parking lamps, the mirror adjuster, E, E, power windows, F, fog, G, electronic tracking system. Now, this is why you would probably want to read your learn in this chapter, is to read about what is electronic tracking system control, okay, and it's in your chapters. You could actually go to your uh, to the learn part, put in control F, okay, put in that word right there, electronic tracking system control, and then basically it ought to take you to the chapter where it is and you can read up more on it. Okay, H is steering wheel, height and trunk release for II, JJ, uh, the blinkers, front shield, defrost, M, windows, and N is windshield wipers and cruise control. Okay, name the fluid spills. Now, why are we trying to name fluid spills? You know, you back your car out of the driveway and basically it kind of tells you, um, you know, you pull out, you see a black spot on the on the ground. What does that mean? It's an oil spot. That means your car is leaking oil and you need to go get it checked because it, the oil is like the life blood of the whole system. You don't have oil in the car, it ain't gonna work, okay? So our first oil spill is a green spot. If you saw sort of, some sort of green spot on the driveway, that is usually antifreeze. A red spot looks almost like blood on the, um, um, driveway, but sometimes uh, if it soaks into it, it'll, it'll start turning black or a kind of a brownish. That is for transmission. Water spots are not bad. It could be condensation from the AC. Four, if you see a black spot on the driveway, it is oil. Next ones, if you can see a clear spot on the driveway near the tires, that usually brake fluid or power steering. And then if you see a clear spot, it has a strong odor to it, it's probably gasoline, okay? So these are our fluid spills, and now we're gonna get more into how the car works, things that you need to take care of, uh, what do they do, okay? The starting test. the Trunk Monkey Theft Retrieval System. Because sometimes getting your car back is simply not enough. Another revolutionary idea you'll only find at Suburban Auto Group, pending approval from the Department of Agriculture. The starting task. Let's talk about that. There's two things you should do every time before you get behind the wheel of the car. Okay, well, let's do this. There's two things you should do before you get in the car. What do you think they should be? Two things you should do before you get in the car is look around your car. Not only look around your car, you should be able to uh, see if there's anything under the car, like, you know, your sister's bicycle underneath the car or whatever. Uh, I had a, one time kids were playing hide and go seek. Uh, dad runs out, he's got to go get a part for something, and the kid was hiding under the car. So, so basically, you want to check under the car before you get in there. Now, two things you should do when you get in behind the wheel of the car, and it's wear your seatbelt and adjust your mirrors, okay? Not necessarily in that order, but I would make sure they're done before you, you, you know, you put it in drive or reverse and take off and go, okay? To help you remember the, uh, this, we use an acronym called SMILE. SMILE stands for seat adjustment. Adjust your head uh, rest where you don't have whiplash. Your head goes back like that, okay? Mirrors, adjust your mirrors. Now, 
guys, you want to adjust the seat first, then the mirrors. Because if you adjust the mirrors and then adjust the seat, you're gonna have to readjust the mirrors again. Okay? I don't want to. I don't want you looking in the mirrors like like in the left mirror. I don't want you leaning out like that, or the right mirror, or whatever. And you're and you're and you're leaning out like that, or you look in the rear view mirror and you got to pop your head up like that. You should be drive like this, and I should just be able to turn my head like that and look at the rear view mirror. Okay? Hey everybody, I'm here today to show you how to adjust your car mirrors. In this video, I will be showing you how to adjust the three main mirrors in your car. It's actually a really simple process, so let's get right to it. I'm going to start off by telling you how to adjust the outside mirrors, the wing mirrors right here. So there's one on the driver's side right here and then one on the passenger side. Now when you are adjusting your mirrors, the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you are in the position that you will be driving in. You don't want to adjust your mirrors leaning forward because if you're driving like this on a regular basis, you're going to want to keep your body like this. So I'm going to put the camera right where my eyes are and I'm going to show you what you should be looking for when you are adjusting your mirrors. Let's get right to it. We'll start off with the uh, driver's side mirror. So the driver's side mirror is actually already in the perfect position. As you can see right here about one quarter of the mirror uh, allows me to see the rear quarter panel of my car so right now this little bit of white here is my vehicle and then this bit over here allows me to see down the car be beside me so it allows me to see the lane beside me if I was driving on the street right now you would be able to see I would be able to see the cars that are in the lane beside me behind my car so that's the ideal mirror adjustment you want one third to one quarter to be showing the side of your vehicle and then the rest of it should be angled so that you can see the lane beside you now if we take a look on the passenger side you can see that we have some adjustment to do right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust it properly so look at that passenger side mirror I'm going to bring it in so that I can actually see a little bit of my vehicle so I'm moving it inwards you see the little bit of white right there so right there I'll use my finger to show you right there is my vehicle about a third to a quarter of the mirror right now shows the side of my vehicle and then the, the rest of the mirror the remaining part shows the lane beside me so now I'm able to see all of the cars that are driving in the lane beside me behind my car so that's how you adjust the side mirrors it's actually a really simple process now for the rear view mirror let's see if we can get this to show um, it's not really uh, doing a great job because there's a little bit uh, of a lighting issue right now I'm gonna try and move my head so what you want to look for and hopefully you can see this in the camera right now the, the the rear view mirror right here is just showing all of the window you want it to show for the most part as much of the rear windshield as possible so I'll turn the camera around because I know that it's probably pretty hard to see this uh, in the video so what you when you look into that rear view mirror what you want to do is you want to be able to see that rear windshield you want to be able to see the cars behind you through the rear windshield over there so right now that is where it is positioned but because of the poor lighting in this video I apologize I'm gonna try and get it to auto adjust right here no it's not working but what you want to do is you want to adjust it so that you can see out the rear windshield so once again if I turn around you want to be able to look like that you want to be able to see that when you're looking in the rear view mirror it's actually a really really simple process if I bring the camera really close you can see what I'm looking at right there and you can see my face so you can see the rear windshield that I'm talking about when you look directly into the rear view mirror when you are in your driving position you want to be able to look out that rear windshield that you see right there but that's basically it. Those are the three mirrors, the three main mirrors of your car. And those are, that is how to adjust them properly uh, so that you can get the optimal view uh, of the cars beside you and behind you. And that's basically it. I really hope that you have enjoyed this driving tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But I did my best either way. If you really enjoy my content, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to see more awesome content like this. And let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this video and if you have a little trick that you use to adjust your car mirrors quickly and easily. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, I'm here today to show you how to adjust your car mirrors. In this video, I will be showing you how to adjust the three main mirrors in your car. It's actually a really simple process, so let's get right to it. I'm going to start off by 
telling you how to adjust the outside mirrors, the wing mirrors right here. So there's one on the driver's side right here, and then one on the passenger side. Now when you are adjusting your mirrors, the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you are in the position that you will be driving in. You don't want to adjust your mirrors leaning forward, because if you're driving like this on a regular basis, you're going to want to keep your body like this. So I'm going to put the camera right where my eyes are, and I'm going to show you what you should be looking for when you are adjusting your mirrors. Let's get right to it. We'll start off with the uh, driver's side mirror. So the driver's side mirror is actually already in the perfect position. As you can see right here, about one quarter of the mirror uh, allows me to see the rear quarter panel of my car. So right now, this little bit of white here is my vehicle. And then this bit over here allows me to see down the car be beside me. So it allows me to see the lane beside me. If I was driving on the street right now, you would be able to see, I would be able to see the cars that are in the lane beside me behind my car. So that's the ideal mirror adjustment. You want one third to one quarter to be showing the side of your vehicle and then the rest of it should be angled so that you can see the lane beside you. Now if we take a look on the passenger side, you can see that we have some adjustment to do right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust it properly. So look at that passenger side mirror. I'm going to bring it in so that I can actually see a little bit of my vehicle. So I'm moving it inwards. You see the little bit of white right there? So right there, I'll use my finger to show you. Right there is my vehicle. About a third to a quarter of the mirror right now shows the side of my vehicle. And then the, the rest of the mirror, the remaining part, shows the lane beside me. So now I'm able to see all of the cars that are driving in the lane beside me behind my car. So that's how you adjust the side mirrors. It's actually a really simple process. Now for the rear view mirror, let's see if we can get this to show. Um, it's not really uh, doing a great job because there's a little bit uh, of a lighting issue right now. I'm going to try and move my head. So what you want to look for, and hopefully you can see this in the camera, right now the, the, the rear view mirror right here is just showing all of the window. You want it to show for the most part as much of the rear windshield as possible. So I'll turn the camera around because I know that it's probably pretty hard to see this uh, in the video. So what you when you look into that rear view mirror, what you want to do is you want to be able to see that rear windshield. You want to be able to see the cars behind you through the rear windshield over there. So right now, that is where it is positioned, but because of the poor lighting in this video, I apologize. I'm going to try and get it to auto adjust right here. No, it's not working. But what you want to do is you want to adjust it so that you can see out the rear windshield. So once again, if I turn around, you want to be able to look like that. You want to be able to see that when you're looking in the rear view mirror. It's actually a really, really simple process. If I bring the camera really close, you can see what I'm looking at right there. And you can see my face. So you can see the rear windshield that I'm talking about. When you look directly into the rear view mirror, when you are in your driving position, you want to be able to look out that rear windshield that you see right there. But that's basically it. Those are the three mirrors, the three main mirrors of your car. And those are, that is how to adjust them properly uh, so that you can get the optimal view uh, of the cars beside you and behind you. And that's basically it. I really hope that you have enjoyed this driving tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But I did my best either way. If you really enjoy my content, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to see more awesome content like this. And let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this video and if you have a little trick that you use to adjust your car mirrors quickly and easily. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Indicator lights. Uh, you know, uh, again, check all your indicators. We just went over those to see if there's any bad ones. Lock doors. All right. Ask your uh, seat passengers to lock their doors. And then E, engage the seatbelt. Okay. So this is the starting task. Which two acronyms uh, on the smile part uh, is the most important? It is seatbelts and the mirrors okay matter of fact in texas it is a state law that everybody must wear a seatbelt okay okay so now we'll watch a video here a lot of people don't realize how dangerous speeding can be the lower limits you see posted in neighborhoods are there for a reason. So when the unexpected happens, you have time to stop.
because even five or 10 miles over the limit can mean the difference between a near miss and a hit. Stop speeding before it stops you. Okay, we're gonna continue on tires. We're gonna start with tires now. Tires, inflation is the most important thing. It's 90% of tires uh, on the road today. Sorry, I had something in my throat there. Uh, so let's say we went to Walmart and we took an air gauge out and we walked through the Walmart. 90% of those cars in that Walmart will not have the correct air in the car. Check your airs and the tires once a month. Eh, if they're brand new tires, maybe two, two or three months, okay? Especially when it goes from hot to cold, okay? So hot to cold, uh, that would be uh, the molecules are slower in the tire from what I heard. And basically, you lose a lot of air uh, at that time. So be aware of that. Uh, number two, balance your tires, okay? If the car shakes, so when you get it up to 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, the car shakes, or 50 miles an hour, the car's starting to shake, uh, you know, the tires need to be balanced, okay? Rotate your uh, tires every two oil changes, okay? So, uh, you know, move them from the front to the back, the back to the front. For improving gas miles, check your errors in the tires uh, once, a, once a month, you know, maybe two or three months. Maximum inflation pressure, that is usually located around the uh, realm of the tire. It'll say max PSI, okay? How can you tell if the tires are properly inflated? One thing you can do is take uh, um, the penny from Lincoln, uh, the penny, take Lincoln's head and stick it upside down into the thread. If you can see the top of Lincoln's head, then you have very low tread and you need to go get new tread. Really, in a nice sunny day, the um, basically in a nice sunny day, slicks are really good. But the problem with us in Texas, it could be raining on one side of the street, and then on the other side of the street, it, could, it may not rain at all. So, um, so that's the reason why you need tread, because tread is what throws the water away from the wheels. If you rode slicks on a nice rainy day, you'd be sliding all over the place. Where can you buy new tires at? Walmart, Pet Boys, Discount Tires, National Tires. There's many, many more, but those, these are you know, some places as well. Now, these are uh, certain tires. Notice that these are overflation uh, tires. That means it's wearing down right here, okay, in the middle. Underinflated, it's wearing down on the sides here, okay? This is a wheel alignment. That means, that means the car, if, this, if these are the wheels straight, okay, the wheels are kind of turned out like that, and so it's only riding on the outside of the tire here. Remember we talked about the balancing your tires? These are little metal pieces or weights that are on your tire, okay? So they balance it. Sometimes after time, especially if you keep hitting a lot of curves, the, the, those weights or potholes, those weights will fall off, okay? And then, and then they start making these little spots here on the tires. So be aware of that. Right here is when you rotate your tires front to back, and then the next time crisscross them, okay? So kind of be aware of that, all right? Brakes, check your brake fluid once a month. Uh, you can eyeball it. You don't need to stick your hand in there or anything. You can see whether it's clear or not. You know, when you're cleaning the car, check the brake fluid, okay? Um, why do you want to replace your brake pads? Because it will cost wear and tear. Uh, there's these little metal clips and a, the, the, uh, on the end of the brake pad, and when it, you'll start hearing a, a squeaky noise, kind of like taking your, your fingernails and putting it on a shock board and making that noise, kind of the same thing on those brakes. Okay, how often should you flush the brakes, get rid of the fluid that's in there and redo it? They usually say about 60,000 miles, okay? The color of the brake fluid is clear, it is clear. Okay. Change your brake pads every 25,000 miles. Uh, now, uh, emergency brake. 
So a lot of y'all are going to go get new cars, or you got a used car, or you get grandpa's car, or you get the left hand-me-downs from brother or sister, okay? Take the car, go out to a parking lot, let the car go about five miles an hour, and then try to stop the car with the emergency brake, okay? Two things it does. About I do this almost every six months or at least once a year. Um, what it does, it helps align those uh, brake, I don't know exactly the science to it, but it aligns the brake pads uh, for the emergency brake. The other thing it does, it helps you know how, how to use the brake pad. So if parents, you're listening to this, or students, when you get in that parking lot for that first lesson, I want you to do all the things that we tell you in the parking lot, but I want you to also pull the emergency brake up and figure out how to stop the car, okay? So you know when you need to use it, you know how to use it. Battery, okay, where does the car battery, uh, what does the car battery look like? All right, looks like that. Typically uh, resembles a black box, two cables connected to terminals. Check the battery's life expectancy. Keep the battery terminals clean. Right up here is a little white fungus that usually grows on there, okay? You can get that off with baking soda. They got spray paint, the, the spray paint that cleans those. Coca-Cola gets it off. Keep those clean. Your battery will last a long time, okay? Uh, keep the battery case clean. Check the owner's manual for any other questions about it. Not all batteries require, like this battery right here requires to you putting water in it. So does this one up here, but some, not all batteries, you have to put water in it and, and, and keep it going. So um, if you do mess with the battery, always wear gloves and eye protection. Oil in the car's engine is like the blood in the human's body. It is the most important thing in the car. Okay, so remember that. Always make sure you have good oil. I would definitely check my oil about every two months, especially if you go on a really, really long trip or you're fixed to go on a long trip. Two types of oil. There's regular oil, petroleum oil, and there's synthetic oil. Petroleum oil lasts about 3,000 miles and then you need to change it. Synthetic oil is 7,500. Some people say 6,000, okay? Now, Jiffy Lube or these oil places are put synthetic in, but on the sticker, they'll put 3,000 miles because they want you to come back every 3,000 miles. So if you put synthetic, put on there 5,000 on the sticker or 6,000 on the sticker so you don't have to come back so soon, okay? Uh, we've talked about that. Usually, they will offer synthetic oil changes in the... In so you, you got to ask for the synthetic. I, I always do a synthetic oil because I do a lot of miles, okay? If you use regular oil, we talked about changing those. Check the oil level quality once a month, once every two months. If it's a new car, maybe every three or four months. Never add oil more than is needed, okay? Oh, by the way, you ask, you know, you got a brand new car. Why should I check the oil? Well, sometimes, uh, like Ford, I'll make a... Um, I forgot what it is. It's a, it's a, not an aluminum. Um, you know, they'll just come out with a new part and make an aluminum uh, oil pan or something, okay? And then, and then they'll start leaking right there where the gasket part is. So always check your oil, even though you got a new car. Okay, check it out. The color of the oil is not black. It is a golden bronze, okay? So if you pull the dipstick out and, and it looks very black, dirty, you need to change that oil. What happens to oil over time is it turns into grease, okay? And that's really bad for your engine, okay? Radiator system, cooling system, okay? So check your water once every three to four months during the summer months. Engine coolant should be changed every two to three years. Never take the radiator cap off when it's hot. The fluid will spray out, burn you, and literally, you know, burn a hole in your skin. Okay. Uh, what is the color of this fluid? It is usually, the antifreeze is usually a color of green. Okay. Transmission. Transmission. Check your dipstick once a month while the car is running, okay? Now, there's some people that, some cars, like I got three cruises, 
and they don't even have they don't even offer dipstick in it they just say change it every hundred thousand miles there is a synthetic transmission oil you can put in there and you can change it every six thousand uh i'm sorry a hundred thousand miles so be aware of that if it smells burn and looks dirty change it okay flush the fluid about every sixty thousand miles unless you have a synthetic in there you can do a hundred thousand miles what color is the fluid it is a red okay uh, now, if you don't do it, the cost of replacing a transmission is usually typically about between three to seven thousand uh, dollars. So, okay. All right, guys. Okay, here we go. Power steering fluid. All right, check this about three to four months. You really only have to check the power steering fluid when you turn the steering wheel, okay, and you turn it around, okay whatever and you hear a whining sound okay from the steering wheel every time you turn it you hear this whining sound that's when you really need to check the fluid or add more okay the color of the fluid is clear flush it about every 60,000 miles all right now tune up a tune up consists of the following spark plugs and wires air filter fuel filter transmission and radiator flush sometimes do you remember when a, uh, do remember when a tune up you should perform at about 60,000 miles or 90,000 miles and, and just get it all done and the car should last a long time. I tell most people if you if you change the oil consistently on your car, uh, change the air filter on your car, do your oil flush, your transmission flush, you know, at least 100,000 miles or so, your car will run for a long time. I have a lot of cars that I have 3 4 500,000 miles on them. Okay. Hoses, belts, replace when cracked, worn places appear. Okay. And, you know, replace when they're leaking. Nowadays, back in my time, you, 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 I, I've had a leaky hose. Now, man, they make these hoses so dang good, you don't really, really have to worry about them. Okay. So be, be aware of that, especially if you see a crack in them or whatever. Uh, definitely replace them spare tire oh my god a spare tire we have one yes okay except a Kia Soul does not have a spare tire I know that I, I had a Kia Soul's like where's a spare tire they don't even have one okay check your air pressure every six months okay so when you clean out the trunk or you clean the car up really good go there and check the spare or if you go get to a tire place to get them fill up, tell them to check your spare out, make sure it's working. Because, you know, air don't stay in the tire forever. Okay, so be aware of that. You know, how many of y'all have bikes in your garage? Okay, you go out to the bike and there's no air in the tire. You notice it just didn't stay in there. You got to fill it up all the time. Same thing. So be aware of that, about that spare tire. Okay. Also, do you know how to change a flat tire? So right here, do you know how to change a flat tire? I would suggest parents, if you're watching this part at this time, or if you're a student, go out with mom and dad and say, hey, dad, show me how to change the tire. I know some of y'all are going to call AAA and you're never going to mess with it. If you're, if you're a girl, I hate to say that, but sometimes a girl will just smile. Like my daughter says, look, I ain't getting, I ain't changing that tire. I'll just smile at a, a boy and he'll just change it for me. Whatever you do, at least know how to do it. Go watch a YouTube video on it so you at least know how to do it. Oh, also on that spare tire, you know, uh, go read it also in the learner part. It'll explain there too in the learner part. Air filter, check your um, uh, change on every oil change, okay? Maybe every two oil changes, all right? The filter should be in good condition. Uh, check for tears and inspecting it. The color of the air filter should be white, okay? So if it's black, dirty, most Jiffy Lubes or Walmarts, wherever you go, get your place uh, a quick lube, whatever, and get your place. They'll show you the air filter, whether it's bad or good. And you can say, now nah, I'll do it on the next oil change or yeah, go ahead and do it, okay? Car mechanics. Basically, when to keep it clean, wax your car in the shade, wash your car in the shade for water spots to protect the paint uh, and so forth. On mechanics, I would just make sure I talk to a mechanic that basically, um, 
you know, you get a referral from, okay? Someone that they like the guy, so on. Uh, I, have a, I have a mechanic that does my cars, and I go the same guy no matter what. I'll, I will tow my car to this guy to have him done it. So there are some good ones out there. You, you don't, don't charge a lot. My guy's pretty much up front. Hey, you know, you need this in the future. You don't have to get it right now. That is the kind you want that, that says, hey, they don't want to come out and say, hey, your car needs this, 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 this. Well, it needs it because a computer says at 60,000 miles, you're supposed to replace it right then. You don't have to replace it. I always ask the question, if I don't replace that, is my car going to break down next day? Oh, no, you'll go a little ways without it. Okay, that's a good mechanic. Okay, when they tell you, that, oh, yeah, your car's going to break down tomorrow. Okay, no, then you don't want to use someone like that. So be aware of that. All right, be aware, we're going to watch a video here in a little bit, and then after that video, we're going to go do the uh, video questions and the quizzes, okay? Here's a YouTube video. Video on the internet, a scrapbook full of pictures. Memories are all Reginald and Rose Rutledge have left of their daughter, Rihanna. She lived, you know, as close to a perfect life as you know I've ever seen. 18-year-old Texas Tech honor student Rihanna and her brother Reggie were asleep in the back seats of the family SUV Christmas Eve a year ago. The car hydroplaned on a rainy highway. It spun out of control and hit a tree. 